Hey everyone, Shark here with another 2v2 for you today. This is an absolutely brutal match between two challenger level arranged teams. This match really demonstrates how to build for the late game, but more importantly, how to use your battle group and unit abilities to tilt an engagement in your favor and really take the fight to a talented opponent. Playing as the Axis, we have Dumai from Canada, the number 60 ranked DAC 2v2 player using the Battlefield Espionage Battle Group. And then his partner, Dexon from Georgia, the number 31 ranked Wehrmacht player using the Mechanized Battle Group. On the Allied side, we have two players from the Republic of Korea, Notningen, ranked number 205 with the Brits using the Air and Sea Battle Group, and Odung, ranked number 41 with the Americans using the Armored Battle Group. Casting this one with me today is my buddy Spades. He's a 2v2 specialist with really, really deep knowledge of the game, and he provides excellent analysis throughout the match and then in the post-match review. As always, I'll do links and timestamps in the description below. And with that, we'll roll on to the video. Start filling those hey, everyone. Steps. So what we got here is Dumai playing as the Dak in red, uh, the northeast corner of the map. Next to him is Dexon playing as Wehrmacht in purple. And then on the allied side, blue, you have uh, Odung playing as the Americans and not Ningen uh, in teal playing as the Brits. Uh, like I said in the intro with me casting, this is my buddy Spades, who's a really, really high level 2v2 player. How you doing today, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, it's my first time actually casting. It's a pleasure to be here, Shark. Uh, thanks a lot. It's a great opportunity. Uh, we have a good game here. Yeah, this is fun. And, and 2v2s normally are so high tempo that it helps me to have someone who knows what's happening to kind of provide some context. So starting for Dumai, relatively vanilla DAC start. You got the Panzer Pios, Krod Schützen, and then Panzer Grenadier out. Uh, for Dexon, you've got two Pios and then a Grenadier squad. So interesting uh, that he's not going for the Kettenkrod. This map's very wide open, and so I, I wonder what his thought process is there. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's a fairly weak start to start with two Pioneers in a twos match. Uh, for ones, it's perfectly acceptable, and I see that people abandon the Kettenkrad simply because of fear of mines. The U.S. typically starts with an engineer nowadays, meaning that an early mine is possible since it's so cheap to make the unit. Yeah. So Odung going for armored, getting a jeep out, and trying to chase down the cross chasing, but man, it is getting whittled down between the Panzer Grenadiers, Panzer Pioneers, and the Karad shoots in itself. Dingo coming into support. Looks like the Jeep's going to get away. The Dingo is trying to close with the Karad shoots in, and it backs it into a corner. Oh, man. That would be a nice early pickup for the Allies if they can get it. Look at the... Uh, very likely. If he could just angle the... If he just angles... Oh. Ah! And it's going to get away. The Dingo whittled all the way down. So good play by Dumai. They crossed him up there. And then meanwhile, you and the see... the support MG from Dexon coming in on the fuel to keep it locked down. Exactly. So good good team play there. Dumai and Dexon play together quite a bit, so I'm not surprised. Jeep is healed up. And now Dexon pushed over on the uh, the southern VP. I'm going to reset the view here. He's... These Royal Engineers are looking pretty outnumbered here, but I'm pretty sure he's paying attention to it, so he should be able to get out fairly soon. There's no way he'll finish the cap. Yeah, he's just holding for this Vickers. Man, Jeep again getting knocked down quite a bit by these Panzer Grenadiers. And we see Mods is uh, setting down a mine on top of the Muni there, prepping for retake. Defensive. Yep. And Axis off to a great start on both of the flanks. You know, uh, we watched a 2v2 on this map a couple days ago. Uh, and the flanks are actually really important in this map. Especially once artillery comes into play. The middle can be kind of hard to hold. Dangerously low. Looking oh. like a wipe. That's a wipe. Yeah. He, just, he stalled too long. It just wasn't meant to be. Uh, yeah, first wipe of the game there. Dumai already has his light support company and has a ton of fuel. So good fuel control for the access. Uh, so he'll be able to tech that up immediately if he wants to. Oh. Myas is uh, bait. He was trying to pull the jeep in, but too many units there. There's no way he'd have the, the ability to push him. Yeah, rifles blobbed up for us off one panzer grenade this way. Do a lot of damage, but don't drop any models. And the DAC really need that. That helps him get those armory upgrades out. Well, if you're looking down south, this Vickers is about to be forced to retreat. Uh, uh, he just doesn't have the repairs done on the dingo yet to be able to support it. Yeah. And now the crowd shooting's got the tracer rounds, so doing a lot of damage. 
to this allied infantry up here. Jeep has to be repaired. And I'm pretty sure the rifles are going to lose this uh, to Panzer Pioneers of the Cross shooting in support, even in heavy cover. But very RNG heavy engagement up here. Yep, the Panzer Pioneers retreat. Here comes the Jeep. Oh, he's going to run down these Panzer Pios on retreat. Luckily avoids the mine, but here's the MG42 from it. Dexen. Oh, but the yeah, he's outside the arc. Yep. Oh, he might be able to get the Pioneer and the Crowd Shoots in here if he's aggressive enough. He's still going for it. I know he switched targets. Yeah, he's going to focus this Crowd Shoots in. Man. Do my with his uh, control of the oh, Crowd Shoots no. in. So impressive. And it gets away again. I think what's equally impressive is that we're almost at five minutes here, and everybody still is over 470 plus BPs. Yeah, this is the light vehicle play. Like, if you want to know how to manage uh, ultralights and keep them alive, like this is this is how you do it. Yeah, the preservation is pretty impeccable, save for that Royal Engineer earlier. Well, allies pushing on the Axis fuel, and even, they're going to be able to finish the cap here. Panther guns upgraded, so it looks like Dumai is investing pretty heavily in his own infantry. Should scale pretty well late game. I like Nodding's uh, strategy, where he's just focusing his micro on this dingo, trying to help support the pressure on the fuel for the Axis, while he just kind of locks down his own fuel with a mortar and an MG. Yeah, and the most important thing when you're playing DAC is to knock down their manpower because that keeps their units from scaling into the late game. Odon going for the infantry support center. Now the flak filling hits the field. And we have a Humvee. Coming down south, ready to clean up the VP. I'd say that Humvee is uh, a great counter to the flak filling, so we'll see how that comes out. Yeah, Even at these highest levels of play, I find that the splitting of your cognitive bandwidth typically results in losing units, but it seems like that with Nottingen's strategy of just barely focusing on the south, it's paying off in spades. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually shocked that this Pack 40 didn't get a shot off on the Jeep. Impressed that the Jeep saw it in advance. Yeah. That Pack 40 is going to be a good counter to the Dingo and the Humber, and now you've got the... Uh, 250 with the Panzer Jaegers as well to chase down. Oh, did the Jeep go down? It hit the mine. Did it? Backing up, it hit the mine. And now the God shoots and hits the mine as well. <laughs> and they just trade ultralights. So the never German mind. Bratwurst. We were talking about all that unit preservation, and there it goes. Two well placed mines. Oh, here comes the wraparound. Oh, this mortar is in trouble. Uh, uh, it should get out. A nice mechanized approach here from the DAC player, uh, taking a lot of map control in the center, and the allies are basically back in headquarters with the exception of this uh, group up north. We'll be going home soon. These Panzer Grenadiers got a vehicle buff and they have tons of vehicles coming to support them. Tons of support, plus the MG42. Yeah, Greyhound on the way out, but actually going to be at risk between the flag filling and the Panzer Jaegers. What's pretty impressive is Nottingen is so confident that there are no mines in the south with two engineers being pressed off. With his shaking. Humber? Yeah. Yes. So the Axis retake the north here, and they're pushing in the center with a Pac-40 MG-42 and some infantry. He went for Panzer Grenadiers. The Humber's going to challenge, but the Pac-40 immediately chunks it down. And it's got to move quick, it'll, it'll risk getting knocked out. Uh, nice use of hold fire to keep it from getting engaged with Fog of War. Oh. Now with this 8 red, you're going to see a lot of pressure on this V, or not VP, the uh, fuel. Uh, Do my going the for the... Gonna get oh yeah. Do my going for the espionage battle group, which would be really dangerous. He's already got a Funk Fogging out. It's already upgraded on the north. Mm -hmm. He's uh, already stealth mode and ready to go. That's a great counter, uh, a great way to hold stuff down. You know, Odung's already got War Machine out, so we'll ex expect to see a number of light vehicles. Eight Rod chasing down the Vickers here. Oh, this Vickers is done, but it's close enough to the base to get recruited. Six Pounder gets two good hits in, but the Eight Rod will get away before it gets knocked out. 
We got an American AT gun coming in and another six pounder being built, so the Allies' response to this is triple AT gun. Yeah. Makes sense. Greyhound is at serious risk here. It'll eventually back up. So trading fuels now, and the Allies losing a lot of map control to include uh, their primary fuel in the center. And we've got this funk wagon mining up the north, so that'll be much more difficult for them to retake. You need to put down the got their healing down as well. What are the heavy mines that it has? Uh, the tellers. Those are the ones you can really knock out a light vehicle push from the Americans, like Greyhounds and Chaffees, uh, by setting up those tellers. Yeah, most certainly. They're just so rarely used. I think that people don't want to gamble on the increased cost. And more AT guns out for pretty much everybody. Now, Dumai went for the anti-tank incendiary munitions, so he's got those three Panzer Grenadier squads. Their anti-tank grenades are going to do a lot of additional damage to these light vehicles. Greyhound forces the flak filling back. Now, here comes the, the Funk Wagon ambush. Eight rod coming in to support. Double eight rods. And then AT gun hits the Greyhound on the flank. And Nottingen's AT gun is so far out of position. He is just not there to support. Now chipping away at some of these eight rods, but they're not gonna be able to finish this. MG42 suppresses the scouts. And so the Axis are gonna ratchet strap down the center here. Looks like they finally got their final tier of tech out for Nottingham, so he just refunded his dingo. And he's trying to get himself out some sort of vehicle soon enough. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is if you can't knock out the RIP players, they can snowball some serious armor in the late game. Do you know what commander he chose? He's I see he's got cook guards coming out. Uh, yeah, he actually hasn't picked yet, surprisingly enough. Greyhound needs an AT grenade. Oh, this AT gun annihilated by the eight rods. Yeah, this has been an absolute savage amount of uh, pressure. And they, they're just doubling nothing then. AT gun in support. Greyhound's gonna push to try to knock out the one eight rod. Oh, but the smoke prevents AT gun from getting the next shot off. Greyhound gets the kill anyway. He needs okay. to be careful about overextending though. And, and traded immediately. Oh. <laughs> but wow, look at this. MG42 pushed all the way up. Now, not right, they're barely hanging onto their fuel right now, and they need every ounce of it in order to get a vehicle at. We're at 93 fuel for Nottingham. He is in the meantime making a guards unit, but I assume he's going for Matilda. Yeah, it would make sense given the, the team weapons here. Matilda got a rebuild on the 8 rat as well. Uh, yeah, second 8 rat coming out. Black filling eats one round, pops smoke, and backs up. Ooh, nice hit through uh, through the smoke. That was the a attack, great round. attack round. Yeah, really well done. I think that something to note here is that there's an insane amount of light vehicle play, and it's a struggle to get to the late game vehicles. But Nottingham is doing his best to stall for that. I love the person. I love the way the Axis players are working together. Oh, Captain gets annihilated. They are moving around as one unit. It's really yeah, synergizing. That's a six pounder. Ooh. Man, another AT gun gets cleared by these eight rods, and the ally is certainly on the back foot here. Odung went with the standard armored battle group. Nottingham still hasn't selected, surprisingly enough. Yeah, Aidrod's trying to knock out this uh, AT gun here, but very slowly <laughs> whittling it down, and now foot guards will show up. Things are going to do is trying to cap the allied fuel. Rifles will stand on it to prevent it from getting knocked out. Foot guards getting beat up pretty good by these eight rods. Oh, bazooka shots whip. Rifles forced off. But Odung does a good job. He recaps the north while the Axis are consolidated in the center. And the flak rolling is so good against USF. They, you know, spam or use a lot of rifles. It just, it's just such a hard counter. Oh, wow. Double AT gun knocks out one of the eight rods. Foot guards recruit the other AT gun. 
This was absolutely the best investment that Odun could have made was getting double AT guns. And right now the Matilda's in production, so the Allies are keen to make a recovery fairly soon, and they're going to need it because they are struggling in the field department. Dexon getting another 8 rod out, and I'm concerned about basically tripling down on the 8 rod play. Yeah, we're at 14 minutes. He's a little bit over-invested in the mid-game. Now, he went mechanized, so he'll have access to Panthers. I should have known that from A-Rod, anyway. Um, but Panthers are not the same as a, as a Tiger, so we'll see what this late game looks like. Black for Ling and DAC infantry retake in the north, but the Allies starting to claw back a little bit in the center. great about Dexon is that he uh, spent most of his time focusing on the center and now he's just finally capping up the bottom of the south where it was fairly unguarded. Yeah. Axis have a pretty solid triple cap right now. Oh, AT gun shots come in. One more. Eight rod will get clear. No. Oh, the attack ground failed. Here come Panzer yeah, Grenadiers to challenge. Going oh home. my goodness. Double Panzer Grenadiers, double eight rods. But Matilda! Matilda cleans up one eight, uh, eight rod. And Matilda's actually in a great spot. Double AT gun set up on the second eight rod. If it's not careful, it'll get knocked out here. Well, this is just missing. This is seemingly absent. Bazooka. Not sure what he's doing. Bazooka shot hits. Oh man. Guns are gonna do a lot of damage to the foot guards. Matilda forced to back off. One more AT gun. I wonder if it sees. Now it doesn't see. Dumai really rolling Odung back here with the flak for Ling, the Funk Bog and Panzer Grenadiers. Really good synergistic play with the infantry and the light vehicles. The rifles have not been effective in pushing Dak off of uh, really any of these positions. Yeah, I'd say though that it looks like Dexon or Dumai is getting a little bit complacent. Uh, he doesn't seem to want to respond to helping his teammate in the south. He's just kind of camping or resting on his laurels. I mean, he's in a pretty good spot. I. It, it can be tough to kind of see the threat in this case. Man, look at these Panzer Grenadiers. So low health and not losing models. Oh, one more shot. Black Filling doesn't see it. No, but it, the second AT gun shot doesn't come in, so Black Filling will get away. Rifles push off the Funk Wagon in the med truck. Panzer Grenadiers on the really are pretty much base locking Odong at this point though. Odong needs to hop on that center VP, he needs to stop the bleed. He's capable at this point. Yeah, at least Notningen got the south VP. Matilda facing off against an AT gun and MG42. Getting some good pens. Yeah. Oh man, that pack 40. Oh, that MG42 right annihilated. Oh. And now the foot guards are perfectly positioned to knock out this uh, AT gun. We uh, got here level. Yep. I mean, that is the strength of Wehrmacht in the late game, is all these really high-powered team weapons. Pac-40 is the best AT gun in the game. MG-42 is the best machine gun. Naval Warfare is fantastic. Static artillery. That Matilda just annihilated those Panzer Grenadiers. Ooh, that bundle grenade does a lot of damage to the foot guards. Well, they better use those feet and run back home. Yeah. Another set of foot cards. They're going to chase down this AT I gun. Bet too. Oh it's my god, they gone. just cleared it. And when they, the recent patch. when they buffed the Thompsons on the foot guards, I think it might have been a little over the top. I Eight probably admit, oh, they're savage now. Yeah, Adron's hanging in there. And it looks like the Matilda's just going to kill that pack 40. We do have an eventual lock-in here. It looks like that he went air and sea battle group. Uh, oh. I haven't really seen any of the abilities from it yet. That naval bombardment though. is savage, and the blockade can be really helpful late game and helping you hold on to some VPs. So it looks like Dumai is going to lock in a little bit on the north VP and that fuel. And this makes sense, but normally the DAC player needs to be a little bit more dynamic, right? The Wehrmacht uses its team weapons to kind of dig in, and you let your DAC player play offensively, but this battlefield espionage battle group is a, is better as kind of a defensive hold ground battle group. Like, sure, you can creep up, 
uh, and, and ambush the other guy, but it really works better when you put your guys in defensive positions and just blunt any attacks as they come in. Yeah, it's unfortunate that I didn't see Divine go with the other type of beacon, uh, the one that just more stealths all his units and allow his spider web to expand and be a little bit more mobile around the map. Yeah, it is pretty powerful, especially because it also tells you when the enemy has showed up. So now the war for middle has commenced. Yeah. And Nottingham's got to be careful because... Oh, Flat really knocked Berlin. out. Easy eight on the field. Stealth up EVA infantry. Easy being the Rolls Royce of the American infantry. <laughs> Quite literally. Odon unlocking BARs now to try to help his rifles tangle a little bit better with that infantry. Got Look double guards wrapping around the south. Yep. But they're going to take a lot of damage here from these Panzergrens. Matilda will do good work. Pack 40 in the back. Matilda's looking for that money shot, and he did not want to roll the dice with him. He just left. Panzer Grenadier is forced to retreat, so Matilda can actually press here. So, 8 Rod pop smoke in front of the AT gun to pre prevent it from getting beat up by the foot guards. That's smart. On the opposite side of the map, you got a Funk Wagon and Panzer Grenadiers. Pushing against rifles. Yeah, Odung's in a little bit of a precarious position here because of that stealth AT gun. He can't really pressure with that easy eight. Now, now Matilda pops smoke to back out. Got double Matilda. I'd like to see an eventual refund to both of those and go into the best <laughs> tank of World War II, being the Grand. <laughs> yeah, you would think, right? Oh my gosh, just came out 40. so late. I think it was like 1946 it came out. <laughs> So we've got Matilda knocking out these pack 40s. And he's going to clean house. <laughs> the AT gun bounces the shot from the Matilda's <laughs> so two <weak>. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this has got to be infuriating. And that is a tiger. So that's what Dumai was doing. Well, here comes tiger. probably that's naval artillery nice. on this pack 40. Yeah, he does not want him getting them back. <laughs> the naval artillery bombardment knocks out the pack 40. Well, it's time to you know start collecting on the salary that they pay in these F1 anti tank guns because they're going to need to start working overtime. Yeah. Oh, here co yeah, here comes this tiger though. Dumai is in a great spot to do a lot of damage and really force the allies off in the center. Allies at a slight VP disadvantage, 320 to 190. If you take a look back home, you'll see a Matilda, you know, going out the pasture. Oh, smart. So you called it <laughs> on the nose. As even the great historian Imperial Dane will tell you, Grants are pretty much Tigers, so uh, expect to see them go toe to toe. I'm of course being facetious. Uh, Grants were not like the greatest tank in World War II, but in this game right now they are very much one of the better vehicles. Rifles close the gates, all repaired up. Nice. So okay, at this point, if you're the Allies, you have good control of the South. You got a, a Tiger in the middle. Do you like? As Odung, would you push on the north here and try to force the tiger to move back and forth? Do you try to trap it in the middle? Like, what's your thought process? They're in a stall until they get at least two to three grants out to be able to apply any real pressure to that tiger. Uh, it's rare that you see people even go for the 17-pounder, but that would be ideal, uh, especially on this such a large map. Um, yeah, getting the vehicle to be able to get forward healing. They only have one nebel, so dodging it can't be that difficult. Yeah, no, that, that's an interesting approach. If you can keep that, yeah, one naval. Yeah, if you can keep a 17-pounder alive, it can basically make anything the Tiger does in the middle high risk. Ooh, sappers get whittled down here. Ooh, 88, uh, 88 millimeter on the field now for Dumai. And a second Neville in the build. 
so yep. the oh, man. 17 pounder would have been a bad play. But he loses <laughs> the Vet 3 Panzer Grenadiers to the foot guards in the center. Oh, this Grant's looking like he's about to get an engineer snack. Oh, the Vickers managed to pick it up. Naval comes in on the team weapons in the south, and somehow the EZ-8 with two AT guns and some rifle support has forced off uh, the DAC player in the north, but artillery, heavy artillery, are going to come in here on this north VP. Tony the Tiger would be disappointed in the timidness of that Tiger. That's the zeroing artillery. Uh, so I see what Dumai's doing. He's going to put his 88 up top and then probably let some support with some infantry and then let the Tiger focus in the middle while Dexon is going to focus up on team weapons to deny the center. All right, here comes the face-off. Tiger's about to face tank two AT guns and an easy eight. Yeah, but an 88 in the back. Oh, Tiger taking a lot of damage. So is the easy eight. That easy eight. One he more shot and it's within. done. Yeah, good, good thing there's not sight. And so both tanks forced to back up. Rifles now pushing. Heavy artillery coming in. That's the naval bombardment. Oh, a tiger shot. Oh, 88 d crewed immediately. Oh, and, that'll get wiped up. Oh, yeah. Especially this next salvo coming in. Another tied for those craters. One more. He's not going to be able to get this clear. Oh, man. Risking it. Loses the med truck. Wow, that naval artillery hits so hard. That's a shame for Dumai that the Pac-40 is just immediately knocked out. Yeah, word to the wise for all the players watching. Naval artillery, don't risk it. <laughs> I mean, now I know. If I see a Flak 88, all I need is naval artillery. Grant's pushing in the center, but two Pac-40 is going to back him up. Ooh, one escapes by the skin of its teeth. Those grants are expensive. He's a pretty happy camper. But Ally's about to have a triple cap on here. You know, there's a really lazy answer to repairing your grant, and I've used it in the past of just refunding it and buying it again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you lose the vet, but you just don't got the time. Oh, the naval warfare knocks out one of the grants. The deflection damage, that's wild. I was just about to say, oh, he's got to clear it out here. It's a nice naval for barrage to kill a, essentially a heavy tank for the Brits. I know it's a medium, but it functions in this game as a heavy. Here comes the tiger. And then this is, this is exactly the same problem that we saw in the last game that we casted on Campbell's Convoy, oh, Tiger bounces both the easy eight shots. Um, if you focus too much on the center and you let the opponents have the flanks, you can get whittled down on VPs. Now, in theory, the Axis should be able to win this with their artillery advantage. There's two naval. They have to extra time given they have the extra VP advantage. Yeah. What are these rifles doing? Oh, that rifle squad is done. Yep. Oh, and the mine. Got a panther hitting the field here. But you got Grants on the deep flank. Two Grants they going? take a panther all day. Nables. Is he trying to catch something on the retreat? Ooh, Nables do a ton of damage to the AT guns in the north. Tiger is going to use the cover to push. The AT Texan guns. is turning around. He's going back home. Man. He's going for the building. That is cheeky and kind of brilliant. Like, it's <laughs> super cheesy, and if this happened to me, I would be raging really hard. Especially, did Dexon... It's a, at least it's a call-in for Dexon, so he doesn't need that final tech building. Panther. Panther bouncing a couple of the Grant shots, so that'll be okay. Tiger taking some damage from the Easy 8s, but not that much. And the Pack 38 
in coverage. Oh, that easy aid's at risk of going down here. Yep. He's going for the crazy dive. Now Amber here, back off. incendiary AT munitions coming in. This easy aid's smoked. But here, here comes the rocket loiter. Really, really well timed. One more. Now the engine damage. Oh, Can we get it? Tiger's still oh. alive. Will they find it? They don't have vision. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have the, debuff. the broken loiter. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> that is so Team tilting. Oh, it's gotta hurt your failings. Oh my gosh, that's awful. Relic, please fix. Um, <laughs> man. The no vision rocket. Yeah, and he. God, he got it out of the circle. Oh my goodness. Yeah, once they're locked on though with that debuff, you're they're gonna get you. Uh that's Oh. I I'm on record saying how I feel about the loiter, so I won't belabor the point here. But what a huge turn for the allies. Yeah, they lost the easy eights, but a vet two tiger, and they are firmly set up in the south. They have the middle. Uh, Axis. Rocket loiter just hit the nipple. Oh man. So now you've got a panther pushing into the center with some pioneers in support. You got the two navels in the back, two AT guns, and then the eight rod. So these triple grant for the allies. Triple grant. Yeah. So the Axis, you know, they've got the VP advantage right now. They're about to capture the center here. So they'll have the allies back on the clock, but they really need to whittle down some of this British armor. Oh man, both Axis players floating a ton. There should be another Panther out here shortly. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Second Panther on the field. That's a great answer to all these grants. Yeah. And really, it's just like, you know, if one Panther is good, two Panthers is better. The biggest disadvantage that they got going on for Notting is that he only has a single engineer to support all of this armor. It's Wait. taken him a decade to repair. He took quite a few hits here. Oh, are they going to get the snare off? Snare off on the He's funk wagon. Does engine damage, but doesn't kill it. The enemy have claimed our sector. Triple vet funk wagon. That's a lot of munitions income. So as the funk wagon funk gets wagon vet, is not going to funky town. <laughs> But so for those who don't play this battle group a lot, the Funk Wagon, as it gets vet, gets uh, supplementary munitions income. I think it at vet three, it's like ten munitions every, uh, you know, ten seconds or so. It it's not inconsequential. Oh, big push here at the Grants versus the Panthers. Panther vet ability doing a bunch of damage to one of the Grants. Now here comes the Tiger again. Worth noting, the Dak Tiger is not on cooldown, so as soon as it's destroyed, it you can get another one. Yep. Axis retake the north. Good joint army composition here. Three AT guns, plus the eight rod and the Panzer Grenadiers. I think if they honestly just parked the Funk Foggin up here, left the Pgrens in cover with these AT guns, they could hold that without much of an issue. The allies don't have the artillery to really fight it. Here come rifles in the center. It pretty much ignoring the panther shots because that's how tanks work. But the uh, Pioneer is doing a fair amount of damage. And now Tiger is about to push in as well. Meanwhile, three Grants being repaired just south of the center VP. Really do with a second Royal Engineer. Allies down to 100 VPs. Yeah, I think you're right. It, like a 17 pounder would be a really nice counter for these heavy vehicles. Looking at the compositions right now, like all AT needs to push to middle. Like there he is, he's moving the AT gun. Not it's bringing yeah, it to mid. This easy eight, really at risk of getting smoked here. Just got deep up by the Panther. Yeah. The snare comes in, now the triple grants. They're focusing, the oh, guns. immediately one knocked out. And here comes the rocket loiter. Second Grant goes down, one backs up. Now I need to make Ooh. something of this. This is so important. First Panther goes down to the rocket loiter. Second one is being targeted. 
They're going for the double AT gun D crew. Yeah, the triple foot guards. Med truck doesn't back up fast enough. It gets knocked out. Pioneers damaged by the rockets. Here comes the Grant to challenge the Panther. They need to pick up that decrude AT gun and start popping on that Tiger. Yeah. The Grant needs to back up here. It'll get, oh, the foot car is just running right at the Tiger here. They just ate a massive round. Oh, they whiff a bunch of bazooka shots. But a lot of AT guns just went down for the Axis. Hit for some of the newer players uh, using the uh, attack vehicles only doesn't decrease their ability to shoot infantry. They will always prioritize shooting infantry with the Thompsons and they will only shoot tanks with the bazookas. Recommended. That's smart. Hey, uh, do my almost caps the Southern VP here, which would have been a great way to put some additional pressure on. Right now we're at kind of a stall. Rocket loiter forcing the axes all the way back. One Panther's still alive, but in desperate need of repairs. Tiger I mean, in a better spot. did recover spell. that pack 40, so the allies do get some extra AT that they desperately need to deal with these Panthers and Tiger. And a pack 38, so they're just rolling that back to base to reinforce. Another easy 8 about to hit the field. So just like that, Odung uh, able to kind of rebuild his army composition. Two Grants and three foot guards. Man, Brit late game is really, really tough. Ooh, rifles, Eden 88 round. They're forced to run off. Man, at least it was quick. The splash from the uh, 88 hitting the easy 8 kills another rifleman. Axis doing a great job of keeping VP pressure on here. They're going to take the center. Allies down to 80. Run, up north to get an easy cap. Completely unguarded. And I love this. He's using the plunder ability on all these vehicle wrecks to make sure his new Panzer Grenadiers uh, have access to some upgraded weapons. Yeah, they turn into death squads when they get those upgrades. Yeah, especially with Veteran C and the Veteran Squad Leaders. Now, he's got a flak furling coming out, which, against the rifles, makes sense. Against the foot guards, I wonder how effective it'll be. I think the foot guards take reduced suppression. So the flag rolling will struggle against three of them. I think its primary call is for getting rid of this rocket loiter, which is the only thing that's boxing them out. That makes way more sense, so I'm glad you're here. Grant going for the eight rod in the south. Looks like it'll pursue. Allies is going to cap the north VP here. Panthers yeah, taking some shots. Some kind of call in on mid. Oh, that's the the DAC firestorm. Great for area denial. Oh my gosh, the Grants coming in to knock out these base buildings again for Dexter. <laughs> Round oh. two. I can't. Very I can't annoying. support this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna back off the view to the Panthers here. Hey, here. Rodon can hold it down. Rocket loiter comes in. And it looks like the Verling's being targeted. Yeah. Does a bunch of damage to the med truck and the Funk Foggin, but both will get away. Black Verling targeting the loiter. Uh, still targeted on the med truck. Still targeted. Here it comes. Rockets come in and kill the Tiger? Even with the Black Verling? Wow. Relic, and please those Panthers are going to get striped again. Oh my gosh. And then the foot guards on them. With the vet ability, they can uh, crit this panther here. Smoke popped. But now they clear the smoke. The panther's at risk of going down. Wait left. Grant's coming come. in on the flank. Oh, this is it. One panther down. Oh, boy. Second panther down. Oh, just too much. Naval refers is still on the field. Pack 40 cleared. Eight rod goes down. Dexon's entire army has been knocked out. He got another panther on the field. Dexon's missing all of his buildings too. Oh, <laughs> thank God he did the call in and not the build. Right. Pack thirty eight knocks out one of the grants. Here come the naval warfers. Shoot, trying to deal with the rifles, but the allies have the triple cap on. You know, Dumai's army composition's out of whack. Dexon's army composition's out of whack. 
he'd be smart, he'd run these rifles over to that VP and stop the funk wagon. That parade is insane. Oh wow, that's super fast. Oh, he's trying to bait, he wants it to hang out, but there's no way he will. Here come the that's easy fine. aids. Oh, Funk Foggin is done. No way it escapes. Easy aids with their specialized suspension. Oh, Pop Smoke! Pack 38 in support as well as a pack 40. You know what? Never mind. I'm gonna i I'm gonna stop guessing what's gonna happen because I've been wrong about four times now. <laughs> Allies hold the center here. As well. That provides a buff for a lot of the infantry if they just get healed by it for a moment. Really? And it lasts for 40 seconds after they leave it. I did not realize that. Axe is taking the center. Put the pressure back on. They'll have the north as well. Here comes a Grant and two easy eights. Volley fire in on these Panzer Grenadiers. But they escape. Pack 38 now set up in the back. Nebels are firing. Oh, there's a lot of damage to the easy eight. The foot guards are going to be able to stand on the center. Pop open the tanks. Pack 38 takes a lot of damage, but still active. Those incendiary rounds doing a lot of damage to the allied vehicles. Looks like foot guards are going to get the center cap, though. The Panther, the AT focus just doesn't do a lot of damage to infantry. Now, at this point, the Panzer guns will just run rough shot over these foot guards. They only have one guy with SMGs, but a second squad rolls up. And all they gotta do is stand on this VP. They'll stall for as long as they can. Mm -hmm. He do threw some smoke down with the uh, three-inch mortar that might help him last longer. Yeah, Dumai is still minutes away from another Tiger. Panther and Pioneers in the north. Versus oh. a single... Oh, never mind. We have the easy eights. Yep, two easy eights. This Panther is in trouble. Easy eights are just yeah, too fast. He yeah. overcommitted. Snare would be an easy kill. Ooh. A third shows up in time, knocks out the Panther. It's looking fairly grim. Now, the 8-Rod in the south has cleared the Vickers and is capping. Using the, the mechanized battle group's ability. It's a bad play by nodding to just drive that AT gun right into its view. Yeah, but he's got a Grant here as well. Ooh. And the bait. Yep. And the 8-Rod smoked by the two guns on the Grant. Rifles. Best tank of World War II. Yeah. <laughs> Rifles about to go down. Yeah, there's... N oh, they get away because... Nope, they don't. Hands are going to do is finally get get smart. What an impressive recovery by Odum. He ended up with zero easy eights after losing two of them. Now back up to three. three. Yeah. That's a good point. Man, we are still going here, though. Zeroing artillery plus fire some on the center. Axis capture the north, and so they're right back in it. How do you say don't cap this without saying don't cap this? <laughs> yeah. You're like, you can try if you want. Those Panzer Grenadiers did not go home. Oh. Just Another eat. Panther coming out for Dexon. He doesn't have much of a choice. That's <laughs> the only unit he can make. Oh my god, that's terrible. <laughs> I have to say that that was a long-term investment strategy with those grants to knock it's, out all those buildings. And it's something I would literally never think of. Like, you always think, I'm going to lose the game if I spend my time on their base, and then all of a sudden, now it's causing them to win the game. Yeah. Uh, triple AT guns coming up here. Odung at risk of losing his easy A's. Cool. He just wants the decap. He got it! He got it. Run, so, little rifleman, run! Decrease the pressure here. And now, not Ningen is capping the center. Three to cap center. Triple Vet Guards just shrugging off that Panzer Grenadier ambush bonus. And they will cap. And actually now, Odung also pushing up top. 
The allies might get a triple cap here shortly. Them bulletproof berets. That's got to be what's keeping them alive. It's got to be. Oh. Naval artillery oh. comes in, knocks out that AT gun. Oh. Gets recruited, but not before the allies get the triple cap. Blackberry almost drives to his death here. Oh, it is done. The BARs will clear this. Yeah, and they do. Double AT guns. Much in the build order for for Demai. I don't see anything. No. There's nothing. He he has another tiger out now. But there at this point, it's too slow. Here come the foot guards. This panther is in trouble. Those pioneers. Oh, not enough time. oh god. One spot of pioneers goes down. Panther snared. Foot guards come in. Panther guards knocked out. Pop the, up those nevels. The tiger is going to come into the center, but it's not enough. They don't even have the infantry at this point to recap any of these points. Wow. Knocking Jackson has the literally orders. zero units. Wow. And that's, that's <laughs> it. All right, everyone. So before we get into the post-match discussion, I'm going to do a quick overview of the build orders from the teams. Again, with a 2v2, uh, going to kind of touch on the high points and the themes from the build orders rather than doing a line by line. And you'll see when you get to the end game armor, there's, there's a lot there and not a lot you can take away from uh, spamming Panthers. So speaking of Panthers, uh, we'll start with Dexon in the mechanized battle group. He uses a double pioneer opening, uh, two pioneers, two grands, and MG42 before he transitions uh, into a call and heavy mid game. So he picks the Panzer Grenadier headquarters. He gets a couple of Panzer Grenadier squads out, a pack 40, ends up with the second pack 40. But the big thing he does in the mid game is he builds five eight rods. Now, I think he only had two on the field at any given time, uh, but that was initially his strategy is to try to run the allies off the map with eight rods. And to some extent, they were really successful. The allies were base locked uh, for a decent portion of the mid game. Um, he also gets two naval warfers out for the end of the game. And then at the end, you just see Panther heavy endgame with five Panthers. Part of this is the fact that his uh, base buildings were knocked out over and over again. So that was really the one thing that he could reliably build. Um, I think we probably see a different unit composition at the end of the game if he has access to all of his tech buildings. Then for Dumai, plan is a DAC, Battlefield Espionage Battle Group. He starts with a, a light mechanized opening, pretty traditional with the Panzer Pioneer, the Crowd Schutz, and three Panzer Grenadiers. Gets into a Panzer Jaeger, the Flak for Ling. Then he gets the Funk Foggen out and starts to use uh, the stealth abilities of the battle group before he gets a couple pack 38s out. And then really he transitions into an armored reserves endgame. He doesn't play with the mechanized company very much. Ends up getting three tigers out. Um, and this is kind of where you see, again, the, the frustrating lack of army composition for the axis towards the end of the game. Uh, he starts having some losses and then he's saving uh, to continue to replenish the tiger because he needs the heavy armor to deal with the, the allies' armor pushes, but the uh, air and sea bombardment is making the Flak 88 really non-tenable. Um, notable armory upgrades. He got the advanced field repairs upgrade, which I don't see all that often to keep his vehicles on the field. I think that was smart. Veteran squad leaders, vehicle survival, which are pretty standard. Rapid advance to allow the vehicles to cap and for the additional movement speed. And then the emergency repair kits. On the allied side, Nottingham, uh, playing as Air and Sea Battle Group. He starts really heavily with kind of a mechanized start. Um, so a couple of sappers and dingo and a mortar into a Humber. So no mainline infantry for him. Then he transitions to support weapons for the mid game with a couple of AT guns and a couple of Vickers. And then he uses the withdraw and refit ability to power his end game. So he starts with a couple of Matildas, eventually gets a total of eight grants out this game. I don't think I saw more than four on the field at a time, but eight built total as well as four foot guard squads. So the infantry that scale really well in the late game and can deal with some of the, the axis mediums. He did upgrade the infantry training and armored vehicle training uh, from his training center. Uh, that's also really valuable in helping keep your infantry and your tanks alive. And then finally for Odung, playing as the American Armor Battle Group. Uh, looked like a pretty standard armor battle group opening, right? Engineer, Jeep, uh, three rifles into the infantry support center. He started to lean into the motor pool for the mid game, right? He unlocked War Machine. He got a Greyhound out. And then I think uh, the game had just tilted so far in the Axis' favor at that point that he pivoted. So he got a couple of AT guns out to deal with their light vehicles. 
and then really transitioned into the easy eight late game, uh, making sure that he built the tank depot so he could take advantage of the cost savings for the easy eight. He built a total of six Shermans. I think he had the two initially, uh, eventually went down and then built four more. Um, and I think he had three or four on the field at the end of the game. So with that, uh, we'll get over to the discussion with spades. This is a good one. All right. So uh, spades and I have gotten a little bit of coffee uh, and, and shared some notes here. A lot to talk about, right? Long game, awesome game, super exciting. Uh, and so to preface this, like we obviously, you know, with every single game, the first thing I start with is a the the side that lost. In this case, the the Axis team, right? Do my index and what could they have done differently? And I just want to emphasize that, like, this is extremely high level play. Um, and so anything is more about like what I can learn, what we can learn. Uh, from what they did that worked and what they did that didn't uh, to carry forward into our game. So as we look at look at some of this stuff, um, and so Spades, the first thing that we talked about uh, was the you call it cheeky, you could call it cheesy, uh, you know, face palm inducing uh, flanks by knotting in to uh, to knock out Dexon's base buildings not once but twice, uh, and how that kind of threw the game uh, for for the uh, allies. Yeah, I'd personally say that the cheeky tactics of taking his two original grants and going around the map uh, while Dexon pulls his, pulls his first panther into combat to help uh, fight Odung on the left side of the map is it was a gamble that paid off extremely well. I don't think many players think that way. Um, and mm -hmm. that the willingness of Odung to take that additional pressure while cleaning up buildings that wouldn't pay off for another 20 minutes uh in the end it was a genius strategy yeah yeah it's something i definitely would not have thought of uh and we saw the impact of it as the game went on right as dexen lost units he couldn't replace them and so stuff that he might have needed in the late game right mg42s to counter the foot guards moving in additional at guns uh he didn't have access to he literally couldn't rebuild them maybe a brum bear like couldn't build that so at, at least he had chosen the panther call in rather than the construction so he had access to it even without uh his tier four but still it's got to be extremely frustrating and it definitely uh you know put its thumb on the scale of the outcome of this game most certainly i would say within the last 15 minutes of the match uh just seeing the limited choices that dexon had to make uh and just constantly trying to position his panthers in a useful way to assist his teammate uh must have been really disheartening yeah uh a couple he so we had a couple of notes about uh the battle groups and the usage here so on one hand the espionage battle group um there were a lot of things that really worked for it you pointed out great use of the pgren plunder ability uh for dumai right so the pgrens really scaled well into the late game with those those weapons um the and then the good use of the firestorms as well right to deny vps i think the line was uh you know how do you say you don't want me to cap this point without saying it and it's firestorm plus zeroing artillery um but the you know the downside of the espionage battle group is it doesn't really have those great late game abilities uh like some of the other battle groups do and so i think you started to feel the power wane when all really Dumai had available to him was continuing to call Tigers onto the field. That limitedness uh, as an alternative choice for players that prefer to play the espionage battle group. Uh, the, he, the player Dumai selected the subterfuge beacon, uh, which is the mm. one that gets you more resources from the opponent. Mm -hmm. If he chose the other beacon, uh, then the other beacon would have provided him the ability to make a cobweb of uh, basically stealth. Um, yeah. And it's something that's not often used, and I feel like it's slept on in the community. I've had some matches that absolutely just change the flow of things because everything is stealth everywhere all the time, and those mm -hmm. beacons keep getting rebuilt. Yeah, and so one of the things that, that really helped keep the allies in the game was their ability to hold on to the Southern VP pretty consistently. And we talked about this a little bit, but I think you know if you use either of those beacons or use the Funkwagen... Um, a couple of Panzer Grenadier squads, a couple of AT guns, and you set up a, a defense in the North VP so that it makes it a lot more risky for the allies to challenge you there, then I think you make the fight about the center, and that's when your superior armor in the late game, right, 
um, if you can funnel the allies in superior armor, superior artillery, the better AT guns that the Axis have. If you make it all about the center VP, I think the Axis win this game. If you allow the allies to continue to pressure both flanks, now suddenly you're at risk of losing VPs or taking the engagements that you don't want to take, which eventually allow the allies to win this one. I agree. Uh, I'd say that with a lot of opportunities that Dumai had while securing the north, there wasn't a whole lot of mining going on. I think I saw a total of two mines uh, within the north of the map. Uh, the Funk Wagon has the ability, like the Kettengrat, to plant quite a few different types of mines. Mm -hmm. uh, would have been helpful in locking that position down, and I'd say that the stealth ability of the Funk Wagon with AT guns was his pocket win for dealing with easy 8s That was his best bet. Yeah, especially when paired with the incendiary munitions, right? Um, and you could occasionally see the debuff on the vehicle, but that additional burn damage, um, it won't actually kill the vehicle outright, but it'll bring it down to basically 1 HP, um, and that opens you up to stuff like naval war for barrage, uh, knocking out a vehicle, etc. Um, yeah, I think the mines are tough, because fatigue, player fatigue is a real thing. A 45-minute game especially in Co 3 with the, the faster tick rate, that's a long game. It's a lot of micro and, and, you know, having the presence of mind to mine up the field while you're doing everything else that you're doing really, really challenging. So, uh, it's a good thought. I don't know. I don't know anyone pers I personally don't know anyone that has a bandwidth <laughs> to pull that off. 100% agree. Uh, I would say that the only reason I mention it uh, is that there was times uh, where Dumai had the entire top of the map locked down um, and that he was stalling for that tiger. Uh, mm. I'm not exactly sure where the munitions were going at that point. I assume it was going into salvaging, uh, which are plundering, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I... I wish that there were more mines uh, combined with uh, the unfortunate loss of those AT guns, which would be absolutely pivotal in keeping them in this match later game. Yeah. Uh, so a couple other things uh, on the Axis side. Obviously losing two of the Tigers, especially the, the one that was Vet 2 before it went down, that hurts um, because that keeps you from snowballing your late game. Right, A, a Tiger with a couple of Martyrs in support suddenly looks a lot more more a lot more difficult for easy eights and grants to overrun uh a couple of p3s a walking stuka like all that stuff is off the field uh when you have to stall for another tiger um and then on dexon's side uh i think you know we saw the zero wing artillery a couple of times fine as a like point denial but I think he might have gotten more out of the mechanized assault. And like it's easy to say in retrospect, but the combination of like repair, increased movement speed, improved uh, vehicle and infantry performance, uh, I think that might have been something he could have used to counter some of the big allied pushes at the end and maybe flip the engagements his way. Um, you also mentioned for Dexon, really invested into the, the mid game eight rods. And, you know, I don't know how well that scales against Matilda's grants and, and foot guards. It seemed to be just one after another. I, I believe the count was four. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think that it's very often, especially in Co3, uh, that people get stuck in the mid game uh, when it comes to deploying all sorts of Greyhounds and Chaffees. And then the first guy to pick up a P3 or a P4 uh, seemingly shuts the whole mid game experience down. Um, it's hard to know when to make that switch, uh, especially when the momentum was so heavily on the Axis' side where they were able to push all the way up to the Allied fuel point and basically keep uh, Odung off the map. Yeah, you would think at that point in the game, like, it was over for the Allies. But, uh, yeah, some a consistent theme in the entire Coming of Heroes series is over-reliance on, like, the bridging mid-game units can, can get you behind. Um, yeah, I I think, you know, maybe he's thinking eight rods, multiple eight rods, help me close this out before it goes late. Because, uh, you know, the Brits late game Brit performance is really, really high. So um, all that said, might I interject? Yes, please. Uh, that yeah. If you do want to over invest in mid game units, do it with the Brits. You can <laughs> refund it all later if you have great preservation. Yeah. So, you know, I throw stuff out in the cast every now and then about balance and and. I will say that I think Co3 
is in a, a good spot for balance. Like there's definitely changes that need to be made, but I'm I'm happy in that there are multiple ways to play the game, uh, multiple paths to victory. Uh, you know, so it's not like well, if you're Vermont, you have to go MG42 into Jaegers into Werbles to win, right? Like there are, there are several different ways you can play and win the game, and the different game modes highlight the variation there. So I'm I'm generally happy. But there are a couple of things that popped up in this game from a balance perspective that were a little frustrating. And I think uh, the withdrawal and refit, the fact that it's a completely like a 100% refund, regardless of the state, the condition of the vehicle that is being returned, um, man, like the And it's non-doctrinal. That's like base British ability. That That's nuts. Uh and definitely helps them scale the the fact that the grant is um you know it's it's a generalist tank uh that's good at everything and can go toe to toe with a tiger depending on rng like uh yeah the brit brit late game is hard to deal with um especially yeah. as a good segue when you pair yeah. it with the air and sea battle group <laughs> Yeah, the Air and Sea battle group, uh, the the clutch holding on to all of your battle group decisions until late game uh, when the big AT gun for the DAC popped out was amazing. Uh, he just sat there, waited, and then picked up naval bombardment and just waited for the perfect opportunity. And denying that large AT gun was a big swing in the Allies' favor for recovery to get back into the game. And what it did for the DAC was said that I can't rebuild this. It would mm -hmm. be a very poor decision to make another one of these, which yeah. limited their AT options, allowing the easy eights and the grants to kind of take field presence. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, right? So FLAC 88 or the, I'm sorry, FLAC 36, the 88, 88 millimeter gun, um, 320 manpower, 80 fuel deleted by, you know, that, uh, what probably 200 munitions. I don't remember the exact number. I but so. like fully deleted right like there's not a chance to dodge it comes in the first salvo decru decruise it second salvo destroys the gun and like that's it like you're done game over and so he's got this instant 88 delete tool and then when you combine that with the fact that you also get the rocket loiter um in that same battle group like you get two really unbelievable late game abilities uh really really powerful so to your point having the patience to wait until you really needed one of those battle group abilities and then picking the right one. Uh, huge, huge for the allied side. Um, I would say that uh, another comment here is that uh, if you look at high level play in comparison to the mid tier sort of games that uh, myself uh, play, I would say that uh, a lot of people focus on those manpower hacks in order to uh, gain some semblance of efficiency with their inefficiency of unit handling while higher level players simply bide their time and wait for engagements and save up munitions for big hit or big impact moves and that's what actually defines the success of the game instead of trying to scrape by every ounce of efficiency of just you know one versus oneing every single unit and being in cover high level players go for those big punch attacks yeah no, this is this is great because uh, we've noticed the same thing watching games like exactly like you said, like some top ten level players like Reekly, Fergi, and Ares. Right, it, they take engagements that like the other player will read and be like, "This is either an even engagement or I might slightly win this one," and they use the battle group abilities and the faction abilities to suddenly tilt it in a way the other player is not expecting, um, and and really. Uh, Nottingham did that several times this game and did it really, really well. Uh, and then, you know, we can always talk about the, the skill planes loiters. Um, I think people that watch my videos know where I stand on those. You know, it's, it's already annoying enough the way that they work, but the fact that they target vehicles that are then outside the circle, um, super frustrating, right? So, uh, I don't know how Dumai, the first tiger that he lost, I don't know how he dodges that. Like, he got out of the circle and the rockets came in anyway. Um, so I'm what, I guess you could say good placement by uh, Nottingham, but like no need for sight. Um, Tiger out of the circle and it still gets knocked out. Like that's that's frustrating. And it's frustrating for every, everyone involved, right? Uh, Axes have a couple of those loiters as well that uh, function in kind of the same way. So 
you know who knows we got a patch coming up in a month or so here i i really hope uh that gets yeah, cleaned an up additional comment here about that loiter the second loiter that popped in on the map uh typically they added something in the recent past which is a debuff that they put on the vehicles letting you know which one that the planes are targeting mm -hmm. yet the plane said they were targeting the med truck yet came back in and shot the panther instead yep. which was extremely confusing to me as a player just watching the match yeah and, and it's got to be frustrating uh for dexon right because you think like okay i'm good here and then the only unit you can build because you've been base raped twice uh gets knocked out by an off map again so um yeah really frustrating uh so some a couple of things we we talked about on the allied side things guys did really well uh the first thing the getting the matildas out to counter the like mid game units from the Wehrmacht and then refitting them to grants which obviously scale better in the late game like just really smart use of the faction ability like good job all the way around um the other piece and and i'll let you speak to this one a little bit but the resilience of the allied players in particular odung um yeah, they just did not back down even when they were base locked. Yeah, the um, I, I'd say Odung had uh, the highest level of resilience in this match while Notting Gen just kind of figured out his business as he was the one to do the stall for the later game vehicles where he was refunding his Dingo and refunding his Humby in order to pick out that first Matilda, which really helped swing his side of the map uh, in his favor and eventually began to assist his ally. Odung took uh, a brunt of the losses early game uh, with a lot of the punishment with those eight rads uh, doubling down on the mid game. Uh, I will say that another thing to note, uh, Odung's resilience, uh, the classic Co2 double AT gun paid off in spades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if one AT gun is good, two are better. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, no, that's a good point. And then knocking out the flak for Ling uh, was really big. They eventually got another one to try to deal with the loiters, but I think if they had kept that first flak for Ling alive, by the time the loiters hit the field and it's like that two, the loaders get knocked down a little bit faster and maybe maybe some of these engagements uh change hands uh, it is unfortunate because you think about it that we've been in such a precarious place with all the air call-ins where there were times where everything would get shot out of the air instantly mm -hmm. and then when nothing would get shot out of the air and we're mm -hmm. now at this kind of fabled middle ground where it's like if you have the vetted up anti-air vehicle you might be able to shoot them out of the air before they do serious damage it's a rough spot with the air loiters yeah, and I would almost like to see the opposite approach, right? So they have like the the spot strafe runs and dive bombs are really susceptible to anti-air, but the loiters have more health. I would like to see it flipped, where the loiters really punish you, punish you if you don't have any anti-air on the field, but the abilities where you have to call in a specific run or like it's more of a skill shot with I need the effect to be right here at the right time, uh is less uh susceptible to anti-air damage i think in my mind that balance would make more sense um, yeah you have my vote I, <laughs> that sounds good to me all right last thing before we get out of here the multiple crossover juke move uh vehicle movement at the start of the game um yeah if you're if you're playing this game and you're like how do i move my crowd shoots around so it doesn't die or how do i use a dingo or a jeep like that's how you do it that was incredible i the number of engagements where both vehicles got away with a sliver of health uh mind-boggling and then ironic and you said like this is the most mind point on that map sure was because <laughs> the jeep and the crotch shoots and both went down to a mine on the exact same point within about what 15 seconds of each other uh, yeah, and uh, the um, the interesting thing was the cognitive bandwidth split from Nottingen, where he just sat defensively on the southern side of the map, not really pushing, so he could invest all of his attention into his dingo and assisting his ally in trying to secure the north, which was just, uh, you know, know where you focus and make sure whenever you leave something, uh, you know, out of your sight, that it's in a spot where you can forget about it for a few seconds. Yeah, unfortunately, a squad of Royal Engineers paid the price for that, but um other than that really good really good team play got super exciting game so uh big shout out uh to both teams sending this one in really appreciate it um spades thank you for watching this one with me this is a lot of fun i uh, really appreciate 
kind of your thoughtfulness and your commentary. Cheers. It was fun. Thanks, Shark. Thanks, everybody, for uh, playing such an amazing game. Cheers. Yeah. Hell yeah, guys. That's going to do it for us, and uh, we'll see you all in the next one.